Hello there, and welcome to the second episode of my tutorial series for Songs of Six, version 62. In the first episode, we have set ourselves up a tiny little hamlet here. We don't even have streets, but we do have a warehouse, a janitor, a hunter, and a couple of houses where our people are living at. Also, when you look over there, there's a huge fruit farm being made. And that's where we left off the last time. So for this episode, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the other things your people need and the basic introduction of city services. So there's a couple of things to explore today. So let's get uh, started with that. So first off, I don't want to interrupt the building of that farm. In this game, especially in the very early phases of it, it's a wise choice to have only one building project at a time, because your people really are quite scatterbrained and pretty good at uh, not doing things as you want them to if you have just too many building projects. We have food for literally 103 days, so we're really, really uh, well off. So therefore, we don't need to worry about that. So. The uh, passing of the time here in this game is a little bit different, so every season has, I think it's four or five days, I've never really uh, paid attention to how many days every season has, yeah, it's five days of winter, and so you see one year comes with 20 days, so we have here literally enough food for the next five years, so we don't need to worry about that. So, the farm has now been finished. And as you see there, we have now nine fruit farmers assigned to it. Technically, the game even tells me I'm at minus 19. Why? The game wants to have 28 fruit farmers, just like we have seen in the last episode. Now, everybody of my remaining three workers have been assigned to that. We don't want that. Really not. We're just going to slap down two people there. We know that this farm can host way more workers, but for starters, we're just going to leave two of them there so they can make some fruit happening. So, we're going to recruit the remaining Cretonians here by double-clicking that figure here. And now, we have again quite a number of workers. So, before I get into the service thing, a quick pointer to the support links down there in the description box there's patreon paypal and buy me a coffee as ways and means to support this channel since all the content that i'm doing is free and i have no big sponsorships behind me i can really use all the help that i can get any big thanks to all the supporters out there and let's get into the service thing so as you see here our dudes are a little bit unhappy cretonians let's right click that thing here to see a little bit more about the Cretonian uh, people in our city. Cretonians, they, they don't like immigration. They, they are particularly offended by that. Not every species is the same. As you can click here through the faces, you see various different stats. And, uh, well, this doesn't make much sense to you at the beginning. But these metrics here are what will show you why your people are unhappy and uh, or or happy and how you can improve on that in this particular scenario here immigrants that's this little bar here you see that blinking thing that's the current damage to their mood that has been inflicted by the immigration now the more time passes the more the less they'll care about those and the immigrants from yesterday are your neighbors from tomorrow and therefore this this fades over time but uh if this bar here goes too low your people will go rioting this bar down here is basically the sum of all these thingies here these categories here are all the different um well things that your people care about in a city. So that's what they uh, think about the population, that's what they think about their food and their housing, that's what they think about their available services, and so on and so forth. We're going to explore all of these uh, tabs in the course of the series. For today, we're going to stick in the services area. As you see there, all the other areas have at least a green bar in them, and the services area is entirely empty. That's because this city has no services to offer to begin with, so that's a bad thing. Over here, you see now all manner of different items uh, linked with bars. So what this shows you here is 
what's already offered and how happy are we with uh, are your people with it right now we don't have anything so let's get started and build some services and then we're going to look into the same category again so building uh, menu in the civics area if i th or where was it let's see i'm personally looking for it myself always yeah civics that's where we're looking for it a lot of these items here are grayed out that's because we haven't researched them yet the first thing we're going to put up is a well a well is a source of water and a uh, opportunity for our people to wash themselves here we are living very close to the river so that's not that terribly important but it always pays off to have one then we're going to set up ourselves a hearth that's a very, very cheap and effective way of keeping warm in the winter. It just requires some fire uh, that's uh, made by wood. And uh, then we are going to put down something I keep forgetting about. Sorry. Even after being, uh, after being experienced with that, you still are looking for things. Ah, never mind. We have to research the speakers. I think those were available in the previous version from the get-go. Then we're going to build up a mass grave too, because you know nothing's worse than people dying and not not having a place to to get to bury them at. So this is where we're going to put that down. And now let's uh, continue a little bit. And uh, here our people are working on that. Let's fast forward. The well's done, and the hearth's done. Now they're finishing the grave, and let's see what has happened now. So when we get on over to the services tab, we see that the hygiene services are starting to be fulfilled, and the spots service is starting to be fulfilled. So our people are starting to enjoy those services we got. The percentile number here says now gives you an indication about whether or not you need more wells or more hearths and so on and so forth. So another thing we're going to provide for our people here in the civics tab available right from the get-go is the eatery. The eatery is a building that's basically, well, like the name implies, a place where your people go to eat. So we're going to make that this size here. We're going to go for a bit of a larger building this time and opening and putting in doors and this time you see that there's this yellow area here that's instability the larger a room grows the more um, instability is in the center of the room this game is emulating rooftops for that so you press that right uh, that red uh, shrink room button here and then you can left click in there and as you see there those I, those uh, extra pillars here remove that you can now right click to remove them or use the the expand room thingy to remove them but the long story short is you need to stabilize those rooms and you can also experiment with that as you see there the uh impact here is quite different and uh there are lots of ways and means to to build your rooms in this game it's up to you we're going to slap in now some storage that's uh what's required for the eatery don't ask me why and uh, we're going to put in here again as many of these as possible over the course of the time i have become a, a, a great, great fan of using the entire interior of my rooms because you know the more i put in here the more services this little building will offer so here it offers eating ser services here we have the amount of uh, resource we'll have to pay and now construct so let's see there is another case of homelessness here displayed so let's check this out and as you see there everything's green and as long as everything's green here there's no real homelessness here people just uh don't know where to pick up their homes but speaking about homes we are going to expand that housing because every home here every house is sporting enough room for four residents right now we are already 18 people so that's homes for 12 people uh, no 16 i'm sorry so actually the homelessness figure here is absolutely right but the uh, lens that I'm showing you there is always a nice indicator to see where new apartments are actually necessary. So, 
adding in a few houses, just like I have mentioned in the last episode. Keep them in the vicinity of your workplaces because the people really want to live where they work. Otherwise, they'll not accept that new housing. All right, so let's uh, watch them build that. And as you see here, the happiness meter is full again, and there's another plus two below. Long story short, the happier people are, the more immigrants are, are looking to live at your city, because that's, uh, I think, very uh, easy to understand. So, homelessness should now subside. It's going to take a while. I don't know, but the uh, housing feature is just ticking like that, that the people always take a while until they... Uh, decide to pick up a home and be happy there. So, the eatery is being constructed. And now, after it's being done, let's speed down. So, when you click in there, you see that there's uh, also people working in here. So, we're going to go for auto-employ. In a service building, I really love to go for auto-employment because the AI will increase or decrease the workforce accordingly to how many people are actually eating here. The computer is going to check that out for you and you don't need to uh, pretzel your brain about that question. So, the only downside about auto-employment is it is slow. It'll take a couple of years sometimes until the uh, AI has properly balanced out what's happening there, so be patient with it. I've noticed, uh, I've uh, monitored the AI's uh, business pretty closely a couple of weeks ago or months ago, and I realized that it does a pretty good job, but it's slow. It's sluggish, but it's still really worth it. So now we have all the basic uh, services up that we can bring up. So if we check on out our building menu, there's still the laboratory open. We're going to talk about research in a hot minute. And uh, we got the hoth already built. We have the mass grave. We check this out. We have the well, we have the eatery. Here's logistics. That's not making anybody particularly happy. Work tabs. That's also not really making anybody happy. Agriculture, it's also producing things, housing. All right, so we have literally built anything, everything we could to make your people uh, happy, right? Wrong. There's another really cool thing. Let's get on over to the Cretonians. And uh, here we went now over the services. And as you can see there, all the meters are filling over time. But there's also environment. So the environmental tab is summarizing everything about how your city is built and how your people like that. So when we check out, there's a lot of different uh, numbers here. I'm going to go on over these over the course of the time, don't worry. But what we're looking for right now is roads. People love roads. And as a matter of fact, until this meter is at 100%, your people will grow happier the more roads you have. Sounds crazy, but it is as it is. There's a lot of different things here. So for example, the Cretonians value roundness in buildings. So. The more round we build our buildings, the happier they'll grow. I'll show the, showcase that as well in this series, but uh, I didn't want to start on out with a crash course in radial building. And uh, riches, that's your money, and there's a lot of different things that can make the people happy. We're going to work with that over the course of the series more. For now, we want to go over the missing roads. I just wanted to show you where you can check out how many roads will make your people happy and uh, the like. So, we're going to get ourselves a road down. And as you see, when you start building a road, there's these cyan tiles already and black tiles. These are telling you where your people are right now uh, walking. And the coolest part is that the game is actually also um, depicting muddy, um, cloggy roads when people are walking long enough over a portion of the grass where you don't build up a road by yourself. So basically the game gives you, it's, uh, after years, a visual indicator that there is probably a good spot to build a road here. So this game does really cool, a lot of cool things. So here I'm just clapping down dirt roads left and right because the cool thing about dirt roads is they don't cost you anything except for workforce. So they come free. They come for free, basically. The only thing they require is a janitor to clean them up. And uh, we can now have a look at our farm. 
So as you see there, only a portion of it is being um, planted. I don't know how well that transports over. So here you see the northern part is uh, planted out. There's nothing planted out here. There's even weeds down here. That's because there's not enough farmers on the farm, but uh, it doesn't really matter that much. When you mouse over on here, you can see how much production has happened this year or previous year. A farm only pr produces once per year, so we don't see as of yet what it does. But the hunter will provide well for your city in the early time of the game. Don't need to worry about that. But you shouldn't grow too confident with that either. Because, you know, the hunter is a limited resource of food. If you click him, you see that there's this uh, blue grid mesh alone. So, uh, oh, can do like that? No. so this blue grid mesh is uh, depicting the hunter's reach. As you see, it ain't endless. It's really far, but it ain't endless. But everything inside the blue mesh grid is where the hunter will hunt game. So that's the majority of the map. They have really a high reach. So we don't need to be worried. As long as there's white dots on the map, there's something the hunters can hunt. And therefore, we are well set. But uh, basically, the uh, story of every one of my cities was... I started out with a low amount of uh, hunters at the beginning and then I cranked up my food production until I didn't need the hunters at all anymore because uh, the hunters don't offer a permanent source of food. But they also offer a cool thing here and that's a surplus of leather. So we are now pretty much done with all the things we can build at the beginning of the game. So two things are now important for us. First of all, uh, we have to be researching because there are only uh, locked buildings there left and right and we need to earn ourselves research um, points for that. Sorry, I yeah, knowledge. As you see there, I, I don't find my way in this menu well either. I usually love to use the search menu. I can warmly recommend it. It's really cool. So, laboratory. The laboratory is going to be our first site where we're going to create knowledge add. I'm going to make that building a bit larger because we are now at the point where I can only say bigger is better. You know, with Songs of Six, I'm a really, really big fan of uh, oversized buildings where I just live by the motto, if I don't have the workers to fill this building today, I'll surely have them tomorrow. So you don't have to build another building there. And that's, uh, for me, a very, very valuable thing. So as you see here, we have a lot more unstable areas in this building. So we'll have to put, put up a lot more stabilizing elements. So building, I, uh, building uh, in this game is an art for itself. And... Uh, I don't consider myself a particularly talented person in in this uh, in in the in the building of uh, in the construction of buildings. So go crazy with that. I'm most certainly not the best tutor in that regard. But uh, what I'm trying to do here is simply utilize the interior as well as possible. I'm. 100% sure that there are better methods of doing this than I'm doing it, but I'm here to teach you the method and not the perfection. So, 64 workers for that lab, I think that's a pretty great point to start at. But as you see here, it requires furniture. We don't have furniture yet. What's furniture? So we're going to work on that. First of all, I'm going to press the construct button now, but since we cannot build this yet, it's a good moment to show you the suspend job uh, order here in the blueprints menu. So we're going to suspend the job now. What that does is quite simple. This room here is now frozen and we can now use activate job later to reactivate it. But until then, we're going to put that job to sleep because we don't have the furniture to begin with. So furniture, we can of course build it ourselves, right? So we go on over to the work tab crafting and then there's the carpenter so we're going to build ourselves now a carpenter's workshop so here we go the more experienced you grow the more um you will plan in advance so you could already now plan where your artisans will live at where your uh farming will be at but you don't need to i'd really recommend you to just uh, go with the flow in your very first uh, sessions because 
over planning is sure one way to lose the fun in this game. So we're going to go for something like that. And at the carpenters, same logic applies. We're going to cram in a lot of workbenches in here. But the carpenters workshop is yet again one that comes with efficiency. So we'll have to put in enough auxiliary stations to crank up the efficiency back to 100%. Especially with furniture, this is extremely important because the production of furniture is a very lengthy and uh, slow procedure. So we have now a carpenter's workshop which employs 20 people. That's a pretty good figure to start with. So here we go. And another thing that I want to introduce in this episode while this is being built is at the logistics tab, the export depot. So you see, we got a lot more leather than we're actually using, and therefore we're going to start and export that. Basically, in this game, everything you produce too much of, you should export. The, uh, the other thing we should do right now in this episode is also set up ourselves a pasture, because we have livestock. Livestock has a very high spoilage rate. It spoils with 50% per year. That means you're going to just lose it. And livestock is the necessary um, item to build here, the husbandry things. So, different animals, different incomes. As you see here, Auroch produces uh, meat and leather, and Teladon produces meat and leather in a different uh, distribution. Glopdians produce eggs and, food and, and meat. Here they are really in a bad um, biome for that. And Onxes produce cotton and meat. Well, in this iteration of the game currently, cotton and wool are all the same. So I'm pretty sure that the Onxes are growing wool on them and not cotton. If so, this is one of the weirdest fantasy worlds I've ever heard of. Anyhow, so we're going to go for the Entelodont here because I'm most interested in food. And the Entelodont has the highest production of meat. The Allrock is the highest producer of leather. You see the numbers for yourself. The Balti Crawler is the uh, preferred food for other species. We're going to not cover that right now. So, let's see. Same thing applies here again. Make your pastures big. There's no reason not to. So, here we go. Pastures need a gate, which has to uh, connect to the outside. Must be facing the edge of the room here. So as you see there, it cannot be on the borders like that. So we'll put that down here. And uh, that's going to be our big new projects. So I'm inviting more um, people into the city. Because the more people we got, the faster we get our uh, stuff done. And I'm personally always a big fan of uh, accepting large numbers of immigrants when I'm expanding my food production. Because that's always a safe bet. So, export depot. Let's pause the game for a moment. We want to sell leather. How does that work? You pick the icon here, and then you tell the game how much of that stuff should be sold. So, here we're selling 100% of our warehouse stock, and this meter, you can tell the game how much of your warehouse stock is supposed to be sold. Right now, I'm going to start with an export of 100% because there's really no reason not to. Also keep in mind that the export depot is going to grab inside the blue radius. When you zoom out, that's all the radius the export depot is uh, going to uh, aim for, but you can also lower that. So you can't tell the export depot here, for example, to only access certain warehouses and the like. Pretty useful uh, thing to, to use. Sadly, the hunter doesn't have one of those uh, thingies. I really wish the hunter had one of those too. Maybe in future versions, who knows. So what's happening now is that we are starting to export the leather. The number here, right beside those coins, is my um, is my money. So as you see there now, we don't have any money so far. That's a bad thing. But uh, we're now starting to export all the leather, so money should be there in a minute. And uh, this is a very, very important thing about this game. Whatever your city produces too much of should be sold. And an export station works for every um, item in the game, just like we've set it up. You select what kind of uh, item you want to sell. You need an export to pull for every different good. 
cannot sell two different goods at one export depot and then you tell the export depot how much of that stuff should be sold. End of the story, that's all it takes. The rest will be done automatically by the traders. And don't forget to put this on auto-employ so the AI is allowed to pick up more workers if necessary. Always a nice thing to do. So now we're waiting for the carpenter and for the pasture. So we have our projects. Let's uh, bring in more immigrants. Whenever you know what you need your workers for, it's a good idea to do so. And the carpenter's workshop is ready. Now our workers have transformed into a negative number again. So the carpenter it starts out at auto employ and here it's quite the opposite. I don't want them to be auto uh, automatically working like that. Here I'm 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 tuning that down to 10 people. And since we are now introducing some new item, keep in mind that you have to assign crates to that. So I've assigned four crates to the furniture job, so there's room for furniture as well. Good job. So there we go. Let's fast forward a little bit again until the pasture is done. And now our workshop is starting to produce furniture. They consume wood and trans uh, transform it into furniture. I think that pretty much goes without saying, but I wanted to show you there. You can also press change recipe and uh, you see there if we'd had the right technology, we'd be also able to make makeshift, makeshift weapons here at the carpenter's workshop out of wood and stone, but uh, we don't have the tech and we don't have the interest. Right now, we're mainly interested in making ourselves some nice, dandy furniture. But since it'll really take a darn long time to produce 144 pieces of furniture by ourselves, we can use a little trick here. So click on the uh, icon right next to the treasury, that's the goods, and then you get on over here. So here we see a lot of different numbers about storage, production, and so on. Like I keep saying, we're gonna get there later. There's one thing that I want to show you here that's uh, the most important thing, and that's this little uh, coin pile icon here special orders. So this allows you to order a specific amount of something. Let's say we're ordering 150 units of furniture. As you see here, buy price 5.2k. You can either select to buy the cheapest or the closest. As you see there, the number really differs. The closer it is, the faster it gets delivered and yeah, well, you get the idea. Since we're impatient, we're going to pick closest. I do have the money press buy and now we have an inbound number of 150 pieces of furniture and uh, that's a nice way of spending your early export money for very very useful things because uh, there it's already it's already there otherwise we would need to wait a really really long time until we have actually the furniture together to build ourselves or a laboratory i'm not going to build the lab in this episode though because i want to start with the whole research topic at the beginning of the next episode here we're going to finish the pasture first and then we're going to unlock the laboratory work site and then we're going to go on into the outro. So the pasture is now done. As you see there, the game wants to assign again a uh, incredible amount of people. We're not going to take that. We're going to tune that down to whatever you can expand. Basically, when it comes down to pastures, two things are important. First off, how much livestock you got to put in there and how much fertility the soil there has. The more fertility, the more livestock can live on that thing. Sadly, you don't see the the fertility afterwards anymore, but uh, fertility does play a role there too. It's not only because of, not only with the uh, agriculture, it's also like that. So last year, our two farmers were able to produce six pieces of fruit hilarious so we're going to amp up that number and make that six and recruit a couple of cretonians more and now we're going to unfreeze the job and uh, activate the job and then we're going to build that lab but like i mentioned that's not going to be nothing we're going to go into in this episode so by the end of this episode, a lot of the fundamentals have been already been dealt with. This colony, uh, city, is pretty, pretty self-sufficient at that point. 
the pasture will be a huge thing in the long run. We're going to have a lot of food out of that. The pasture will also, by the way, increase the no number of animals by itself. A pasture produces food and, and livestock. And basically, as long as, they're, as the pasture ain't full, the livestock that we produce will be immediately retransferred onto the pasture so they can they can breed up and uh, fill up the pasture, but they'll still produce meat until then. Anyways, so that's been all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed that one. We're going to continue next time with science and a lot of other goodies. So drop me your comments down below. Feel free to ask away if there's any questions or if there's anything you might want to add or you noticed something I missed out. Be my guest to correct that. Also, feel free to leave a thumbs up on that one, and a subscription on the channel would be also pretty great if you like that kind of content. I do that daily, and you'd be just informing yourself easier if you just hit that bell thing. Also, down there in the description box, you are finding a link to the entire playlist of this, so if you want to start on out at episode 1, that's way to go. So, thanks for your time. I hope you will enjoy this game a little bit more and join on in for the next episode as well. See you there and have a wonderful day.